Sports Today, NVIDIA's 4070 gets reviews, AMD talks trash on NVIDIA, their next-gen CPU gets benchmarked, and RX 8000 GPUs should have NVIDIA worry. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, just like the leaks told us, NVIDIA's RTX 4070 has been announced, and the reviews have dropped, at least for the base models. Also, like the leaks said, the card is set for release on the 13th, with a starting price of $599. That same day, the reviews go live for the non-MSRP or overclock cards, and if you're interested, I will have affiliate links down in the description below for when they're released. It won't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Either way, let's get to it. Starting things off, I'll quickly go over the specs, to which, once again, they shouldn't be a surprise. The card comes with 5,888 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1.92 GHz, and a boost of 2.48 GHz. It also gets 12 GB of GDDR6X memory across a 192-bit bus, so everything we've been seeing was exactly right. Moving on to the reviews, we have performance, and as you can see, in this 15-game average by Tom's Hardware, NVIDIA's RTX 4070 is essentially an RTX 3080 when it comes to rasterization, and it's essentially the same with ray tracing. So that NVIDIA leak we just saw comparing it to the 3080 was spot on. Of course, unlike the 3080, NVIDIA's 4070 does come with DLSS3 support for $100 less. But then again, the 3080 is nearly three years old at this point, so it definitely doesn't feel like a big upgrade. Plus, AMD mentions an advantage that might need to be considered. But first, if you have haven't heard, Micro Center is expanding. That's right, the PC hardware lover's paradise could soon have a location near you. Remember that while they did sponsor today's video, they're where I went to build my first ever PC, and it could be coming to a city near you very soon. In fact, Micro Center just announced a new store location in Indianapolis with two more stores coming by 2025. If you've never been, well, you're in for a treat because Micro Center is a physical store that has everything you could want for a PC build. I mean, custom water cooling, tons of cases, they even have a wall of motherboards. They've got it all. And when you visit my link in the description, they have an exclusive offer for first-time buyers. You get a whopping $25 off any and every CPU that Micro Center carries, whether AMD or Intel, and it includes bundles. Who knows how long it'll last, so visit my link in the description to get your coupon. Oh, and for those who like Apple, they're offering great deals on MacBooks right now as well. Check that link out in the description below. And next up for today, while talking NVIDIA's newly announced GPU, AMD released a blog post just before the reviews dropped. And let's just say it wasn't a coincidence. The blog post starts out targeting enthusiast PC gamers, where it says, quote, Are you the type that keeps on top of what is the best GPU? Do you like to track GPU benchmarks and reviews? At this level of PC building, you should have confidence that you are getting the best graphics card for your system and can crank up all the in-game settings in the latest titles for fully immersive gaming. They then go to their main point with the title, More Memory Matters. In here, they share a few slides, starting with this one, where they show VRAM requirements and a few new titles. You can see at 4K, Resident Evil 4 needs 15.2 gigabytes of memory without ray tracing and 17.5 gigabytes with ray tracing. Then The Last of Us Part 1 takes up 11.2 gigabytes, which if you follow the channel, you know that I recently went over a test that hardware unboxed shared on the new Last of Us remake, where it shows the 3070 getting 7 FPS at 4K and 1% lows, and even at 1440p, it got 12 FPS. The conclusion was that 8GB of memory simply isn't enough. Of course, I pointed out that the port isn't all that great anyway, but it certainly seems like a trend. You can see that Hogwarts Legacy also takes up a ton of your GPU's memory, and the point AMD's making is that even their last-gen GPUs have more memory than the newly announced 4 as you can see, the 6800 non-XT model has 16GB of memory for $100 less than the 4070. Of course, when we go back to the average benchmarks, the 4070 isn't held back by its 12GB of VRAM and certainly performs way better than the 6800, but who knows how long that'll last. If things continue like they've been going, AMD's GPUs could end up being the better buy in the long run. Then again, Nvidia obviously has AMD beat when it comes to ray tracing performance, so I guess it really depends on what you think will ultimately happen in the industry. 
Next up, we have a very interesting story originally from a video by Moore's Law is Dead and later reported by video cards. In it, he shares a Cinebench R23 benchmark of what he claims is a Zen 5 engineering sample, meaning this is a benchmark of AMD's next-gen architecture set to power their Ryzen 8000 CPUs. With that said, the chip itself is of their next-gen Epic processor, but this will definitely give us some insight into next-gen Ryzen. For starters, it's a dual socket setup with 128 cores and 256 threads, meaning it's two 64-core CPUs, and apparently each sample has eight chiplets, so it looks like AMD is sticking with eight cores per CCD, which means the recent rumors we saw look to be correct. AMD likely won't be upping the core count for next gen unless they add more chiplets. Moving back to this, they were running with a base clock of 2.3 GHz and a boost of 3.85 GHz. Not only that, but it shows 10 megabytes of L1 cache, which means 80 kilobytes per core, which is a boost from Zen 4's 64 kilobytes. Finally, we have the benchmark, which, as you can see, it scores 123,000. According to video cards, that's around 15% faster than current Gen Genoa and nearly at Intel's Sapphire Rapids HEDT CPUs that are overclocked with liquid nitrogen, so this is definitely an impressive feat. Now, you might be thinking that it's not as good as you would have hoped, but keep in mind that this is an early engineering sample. AMD's next-gen Epic isn't expected until next year, so the company has plenty of time to get things even faster. And lastly for today, it looks like AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs are set to be a massive jump over current gen. In fact, it's apparently so good that AMD is wishing NVIDIA luck. In a follow-up to my recent video where I covered a leak from Moore's Law is Dead on NVIDIA's next gen, he also discussed something really interesting about AMD. In it, he shared a quote from a source regarding AMD's RDNA 4 based GPUs, which should be their next gen RX 8000. As you can see, it says, quote, The added complexity of RDNA 4 is making N40 a real headache to work on right now, but if we get this thing working as well as we think we can, well, good luck, NVIDIA. Basically, RDNA 4 is presenting some challenges for the company, which isn't a surprise given AMD is moving to chiplet designs which makes for some very real headaches, especially given how fast the interconnect has to be to not add a ton of latency. AMD mitigated this with their 7000 series by not separating the actual cores, just the memory cache. Maybe next gen will actually include more than one compute die or something like that. Regardless, that last part definitely seems like they're very confident with the outcome once they do get it working. Maybe it'll be AMD AMD's Ryzen moment for GPUs. That would definitely be an exciting day. So while that does it for today, do you think Nvidia should be worried about AMD's next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to get your $25 off coupon from Micro Center down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!